As I reflect on 2022, it's been a pretty mixed year, certainly when it comes to new product releases from a two-channel perspective. I mean, the first half was very much a hangover from COVID. I'm not saying it's gone, but I suspect we're going to have to live with COVID in whatever form it is for the next few years. I'm talking more about the impact it had on manufacturers and distributors. They were certainly still very much caught up in dealing with supply chain issues. The latter half of the year, that seemed to change and there were more product releases. And I get the sense now that things are returning to some form of normality. There's certainly been some very interesting releases over the last few months. So let's start with perhaps the biggest news in the last few weeks. We've finally got to know what Andrew Jones has been up to for the last 18 months, developing the source point range of speakers for MoFi. The source point 10 is the first to be ready and launched, but there's a promise of a smaller and larger speaker on their way. Like many of Jones's offerings of the past, it's a ground up design with custom tool drivers. This time he's departed from his three way with smaller cone diameters to a two way 10 inch 250 millimeter dual concentric driver. The midwoofer is a paper cone mix with a shape that's not only been chosen to minimize resonances, but also act as a waveguide for the tweeter. The low profile corrugated surround is designed to ensure that there's minimal disruption of the sound wave from the tweeter as it propagates across the cone and beyond. The front baffle, which is sculptured from two inch 50 millimeter MDF is faceted to help deal with edge diffraction issues. Breaking up the flat surface in this way is not as effective as a curved surface in dealing with the time smearing that edge diffraction introduces. But according to Andrew Jones, it's a close approximation. The sharp lip on the edge is an aesthetic consideration and according to Jones won't severely introduce edge diffraction issues due to it being set back. But I have to say, I'm less convinced about that. The tweeter is a 1.25 inch 32 millimeter soft dome larger than what you normally see on a two-way, but that's because a 10 inch woofer won't play as far up as a smaller driver, so the tweeter needs to extend lower. The crossover point is at 1600 Hz, which usefully places it out of the critical two to four kilohertz region where our hearing is most sensitive. High flux neodymium magnets have been selected for the motor structure, coupling the tweeter and the midwoofer. The twin drive magnetic structure has been built to create a fully symmetrical magnetic field to reduce flux modulation and the intermodulation distortion that it generates. That's the type of distortion where additional frequencies are generated than the original signal. The source point 10 is reported to be a true eight ohm impedance load with a minimum impedance of 6.4 ohms and a sensitivity of 91 decibels. It comes in two real wood veneer finishes, satin walnut and black ash. The first units should hit British shores in January with a retail price of £4,500 for a stereo pair. It's interesting to see the direction in which Andrew's gone with this speaker, his first 10 inch dual concentric design. And this is typically what you tend to find on some tannoy and fine audio products, but it isn't something that he's done before. And there's some benefits as well as some downsides to this approach. One of the downsides is that that 10 inch woofer won't play as high up the frequency range so the tweeter has to extend down lower, as I mentioned earlier. A couple of ways of getting around this, either go for a larger tweeter, which is what Andrew's elected to do, or go for a compression driver, which is what Tannoy and Fine Audio do. Another issue is that wider front baffle and the diffraction issues it generates, time smearing as sound bounces off that front baffle, and some particularly nasty things happen at the edges. The way in which Andrew's tried to get around that is by sculpturing that front baffle. But how successful he's been, I suppose I'll find out when I eventually get to listen to it. The benefits of large drivers are yet again down to the physics. It has a larger surface area, which means it's able to shift air more easily. And that translates into more effortless dynamics. It's noticeable not only in the bass, but it opens up the mid range as well. There's a type of distortion that is specific to dual concentric drivers, and it's referred to as Doppler distortion after the Doppler effect. That's when a sound changes in pitch, depending on if the object is moving towards you or away from you. It's what happens when cars go past you, they go eon, eon, eon. You get the general idea, I'm sure. In any case, what we have here is a woofer cone that's acting as a waveguide for the tweeter, and the woofer cone is moving. 
creating subtle variations in pitch. With a larger driver, cone doesn't have to move as much, so that effect is reduced. And that's another benefit of using a larger driver. Hegel have replaced their flagship P30 and H30 pre-power amplifiers that first saw the light of day in 2011. The transistors used in the P30 and the H30 are no longer available and it's taken Hegel some time to come up with a replacement that they're happy with. The new P30A nicknamed the conductor is a fully balanced design. Match pairs of field effect transistors are used to type tolerances in order to eliminate higher order harmonic distortion. The signal path is kept as short as possible to minimize electrical interference with the music signal only passing through two transistors and a low noise volume attenuator. Hegel's patented sound engine technology is used to further reduce intermodulation distortion. It's a feed-forward system that operates a bit like noise-cancelling headphones to remove distortion in real time. The P38 offers two balanced XLR and three single-ended RCA inputs, as well as a fixed-level input to integrate with a home cinema receiver. There are balanced XLR and unbalanced RCA analog outputs too. Hegel have nicknamed the matching H30 power amplifier the orchestra. Designed primarily as a mono amplifier, it can be operated in stereo mode as well. In mono mode, it's rated at a whopping 1100 watts into an 8 ohm load and is reported to be stable down to a 1 ohm load. The power supply has two 1000 VA transformers and 270,000 microfarads of capacitance. The output stage uses 56 bipolar transistors rated at 15 amps and 200 watts each. That means that the H30A should have no problem driving virtually any speaker on the market. Like the P30A, the input stage of the H30A has a pair of match FETs to eliminate higher order distortion and sound engine technology to reduce intermodulation distortion. The P30A preamplifier retails for £7,000 in the UK and the H30A for £17,000 or £34,000 if you want to go the monoblock route. Apologies if you're picking up some background noise. It's raining really heavily outside. I've actually heard these amplifiers at a recent dealer event. Hegel and Amphion are represented by the same UK distributor and he wanted to put together one of their top-notch systems. So he took the P30A and hooked it up to just the one H30A running in stereo mode, feeding the Amphion Krypton 3s. They're top of the range speakers that retail for around £15,000. Now, it's hard to judge anything critically at these kind of events. It's not your environment. There's other people in the room. But the sheer clarity, scale and dynamics on offer, and that was pretty impressive. <laughs>